Long ago, there existed a kingdom known as the Great Kazu, an ancient land known for its great power and even greater beauty. The people of the land were blessed with peace and prosperity. One day, an evil sorcerer by the name of Keres appeared in the kingdom and upon looking at the riches the land had to offer, became jealous of the inhabitants. The sorcerer came to be known as the Plague, consuming everyone in its path. Facing an onslaught of evil, the people had no option but to appeal to the gods for help. In their last hours, the gods instructed the people of Kazu to gather at the highest point of the kingdom. Once there, the gods sprung huge mountains that took to the heavens, sealing them off from the land below. The sorcerer was banished, but not before cursing the people of Kazu and all of its descendants with a plague that would one day return and wipe out the people for good. Over the years, memory of Kazu vanished, but a legend survived, passed down through the generations. The Chosen One, aided by the Spirit of Light, would one day travel beneath the clouds to the No Land, to defeat the plague, and finally lift the curse from the land. At the top of the Great Peak lies a small village. Thirteen-year-old Signe is on her way back home to her grandmother when she becomes distracted by a white eagle in the distance. She begins to follow it deep into the woods. Enchanted by the eagle's glow, she stumbles and falls into a hole, landing in a hidden cave below. As she gets to her feet, Signe looks up at the walls and realizes this is no ordinary cave. With the light from above beaming in, a mural is illuminated. It depicts the path the Chosen One must take in order to retrieve a sacred plant that would cure the villagers when the plague strikes. The cave walls illustrate a journey to the land beneath the clouds, a dangerous journey to the No Land. Overwhelmed, Signe runs home to her grandmother, as she enters, she is horrified to find the plague has arrived and her grandmother has fallen ill. She races to her side and begins to tell her what she has seen. Signe asks how to find the Chosen One. Her grandmother reveals that because the eagle chose to show her the cave, Signe is the Chosen One. It is her duty to rid the village of the deadly plague, and she must hurry, for it was known to their ancestors that when the plague returned, it would consume everyone by the next full moon. Signe protests, but her grandmother insists this is her destiny. With her dying breath, she takes out a necklace and places it in Signe's hands. You can't save me, but you must save the rest. Signe begins to cry and wonders how she could ever accomplish this quest. Scared but determined, she remembers the mural on the cave wall and walks to the waterfall beyond the village that leads to the No Land. She begins to climb down the waterfall, but the force of the water causes her to slip. Signe plummets into the clouds below, into the unknown. Signe wakes up in a small hut bandaged up. Frode, an old blind man, is sitting next to her. He explains with a grin that he's been waiting for her. She's in the remains of a great kingdom called Kazu. Her quest will lead her to an ancient tribe hidden in the woods and then to a temple where she will find a mystical plant with the power to cure the plague. He warns her that no one dares step foot inside the temple for it is believed that anyone who enters will be eaten by an ancient shadow. As Signe readies herself to resume her quest, the old man gives her a gift an unbreakable shield made with the wood from the first tree. Frode tells her the only way back home is the way she came. Signe thanks Frode and resumes her journey. She looks back to find Frode and the hut have vanished as if they were never there. Too focused to be distracted, she grips the shield and continues forward. After days of wandering through the woods, Signe is very hungry. She encounters a friendly hunter by the name of Takama. He insists on sharing his food with her and takes her to his shelter. Signe begins to tell him of her quest and discovers Takama is from the tribe she is looking for. Takama tells her he will take her to his tribe, but only if she takes him to the temple. She agrees and they continue their quest together. As they arrive, they are greeted and Signe is taken to the tribal elders. They inform her that the temple is a forsaken place, cursed, and only gods are allowed to enter. Signe pleads with the elders, but they refuse. They laugh and command her to leave the village immediately. Takama begs the elders to let Signe stay, claiming he will be responsible for her. The elders agree, but tell Signe she may only stay for one night, and under no circumstances may she approach the temple. Hours later, under the waxing moon, Signe and Takama sneak out of their quarters and make their way to the forbidden place. As they reach the temple entrance, they realize that it is shut tightly by a circular boulder. Disheartened, they hang their heads in defeat. Suddenly, Signe looks closer at the boulder and sees something familiar. 
It's the same symbol as her grandmother's necklace. She places the symbols together and the boulder begins to glow, followed by a loud shaking. The boulder rolls to the side, revealing the entrance to the forbidden temple. They enter and make their way into the heart of the temple, avoiding traps along the way. When they reach the core, out of nowhere, Signe is struck from behind by Takama. A dark fog begins to fill the temple. Takama speaks to the darkness, saying, Great sorcerer, I have brought you the girl. Now make me a god. An evil laugh is heard as the floor opens beneath Takama and he falls to his death. Signe rises, lost and surrounded by darkness. The fog assembles in the center of the room and assumes the form of a dark figure. From the darkness, she hears, Little girl, your ancestors may have banished me, but my plague will destroy them all, and I will destroy you. Without warning, a beam of white light pierces the darkness, focusing at the end of the cavernous room. The light gathers and forms into the shape of the glowing white eagle perched atop of the sword. As she approaches, the eagle dissolves into the sword, filling it with light. Signe takes the sword and raises it, preparing her shield for battle. For hours they fight, flashes and flickers of light struggling to illuminate the evil darkness. Finally, the killing blow is landed as the great blade severs the sorcerer's head. As Signe lowers the sword, the light fades from it as the dark fog dissipates. In the center of the room, the mystical plant is seen. Signe quickly retrieves it. Signe emerges from the temple door, sword and shield glistening and the plant in her hand. The people of the tribe have gathered at the entrance and begin to shout her praises. They shower her in gifts and offerings in gratitude for defeating the long-feared evil. The tribal elders beg her to become their queen. Contemplating, Signe looks at the riches at her feet and thinks of the humble life she left behind. Suddenly, she is reminded of her grandmother's words and her commitment to rid the village of the plague. She thanks the tribe and explains to the elders that her home is still in need of help. The tribe gifts her with their fastest horse and she takes off towards the mountain. As she arrives, she begins to wonder how she could climb to the top of the great peak. Suddenly the words of the old man begin to ring in her head. She must return the way she came, the waterfall. She stares through the waterfall and once again sees a bright glow of the white eagle. She follows the glow underneath the waterfall and discovers a hidden entrance to a long, steep stairway adorned with the now familiar symbol of her grandmother's necklace. Torches along the wall begin to light up one by one, leading Signe higher and higher until she reaches a hidden entrance into the mystical cave where she first saw the murals and began her quest. As she runs out of the cave, the fog in the village begins to disappear and the plague is lifted off the land.